forward to bring in uh, greater collaboration as far as, as far as infrastructure projects are concerned to bring in money uh, uh, in, in this time of uh, crisis. But if we talk about BRICS, uh, it, it now accounts for 25% of global GDP and 40% of the world's population. But there are reports also saying that BRICS has failed to create, it, create its own identity. China is dominating BRICS. Is that so? You know, there's, we need to create a counter narrative to this. There's a I would say a malicious agenda among certain sections, especially the Western media, to try and downplay the significance of BRICS, to belittle it, and to show it as a you know um, a house that is collapsed even before it was built. Uh, I think we need to because you see at the end of the day uh, they want it to fail because it is seen as a threat to Western domination of the global economy, uh, and so it is seen especially because it's building all these institutions. If it were just meeting and you know issuing platitudes, uh, it would be anyway dismissed. But what is interesting is this small group multilateralism mm -hmm. that we are seeing, five members, G20 ambassador mentioned, that's 20, is still relatively small. The large universal multilateralism has failed in the last 10 years. Like, you know, you have, for example, the WTO is totally stalled, 150 plus members. Uh, the climate change negotiations are stalled. All the UN members are sitting there. But these smaller multilateralisms are succeeding. So these are what would be called interest-based coalitions. And these are happening. BRICS is an interest-based coalition. So I would challenge those who are saying that there's nothing in common. One, the will to create a multipolar world order. Two, um, Ambassador mentioned the impact upon the international economy. What is the model that BRICS have in common? The one model is they have relatively strong states that are not allowed banking sectors and financial oligarchs to go berserk mm -hmm. like in the neoliberal model. So this is a counter model, whatever we want to call it. We are better off with a... And with do a you see a strong potential in this counter model when, you, when we talk about BRICS? Do you think that in, in a way it can, uh, to some extent, in uh, uh, coming years surpass in international uh, financial institutions? Because when we talk about the development bank, the idea is also uh, to somehow create or counterbalance uh, Western banked institutions like the World Bank and the International uh, Monetary Fund. Yeah, the BRICS have already conceived of the two alternatives to World Bank and IMF, respectively. One is the development bank, mm -hmm. which will lend for infrastructure and poverty alleviation, those yeah. sort of things. And two is this contingency uh, reserve mm -hmm. arrangement, which is the equivalent of the IMF in terms of firefighting when they have macroeconomic trouble and crises. So both of these together, it's like a set piece, they go together. They are basically asking whether Bretton Woods institutions have any relevance anymore. Of course, you cannot uh, jump the gun and say that they've already replaced these. These are still fledgling. We must be realistic while being you know, optimistic. What I'm trying to say is that these are still fledgling moves. They're taking shape, but you know, give institutions some time. We need to will them into uh, a position where they are able to bring about change, real change in the world. If we become despondent and cynical like the Western media, right. then you know there's no way, no progress. Right. So in I fact, uh, the Social Sciences yeah. Academic Press of China had released a report earlier and said that BRIC economies to surpass US by 2015. So that's the potential we, we are talking <coughs> about. BRICS uh, at this stage uh, have, and in fact, International Monetary Fund earlier had said that rise of BRIC will help create global commodity boom. So these these ambitions uh, and the targets. Uh, uh, which, which uh, we are talking about. Do you think BRICS, to some extent, in the last five summits have really uh, created uh, uh, that kind of an expectation and has met those expectations? Well, one thing is clear that uh, <coughs> when Jim O'Neill downwards, the, what the expectation has been that BRICS will come and further capitalism and advance it right. and further the globalization process that was going on. The whole idea was these are big consumption uh, markets mm -hmm. which are going to increase you know, investors' options. Right? So some people have been bullish on BRICS, even in the West, especially in the capital markets people, because it's bringing high return on investment. Mm -hmm. right? But what they have not realized is BRICS countries have in place traditionally um, a political economy that is based upon greater state control of the markets. Right. So what this means is that they are indeed uh, uh, part of the global capitalist order and are in, in many ways expanding it. But they are also thinking about alternatives. For example, this thing between Brazil and China right. to trade in the local currencies rather than in the dollar. Mm -hmm. So they are in, very, in some in subtle ways also subversive. They are not openly saying we are a counterweight to the West. And they are not saying the BRICS Development Bank is an alternative to, to the World Bank. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that through, I mean, you know, it's like the old order is over. But when you have the Asian Development Bank, when you have the African Development Bank, do you, re do you really need a development bank from BRICS? Yeah, because see, the idea is that solidarity 
is going to be the you know the centerpiece of lending as well as investment policies, mm -hmm. which is based on the South South model, mm -hmm. and uh, all these regional banks are still based upon the world banks and uh, model, uh, which has been discredited in the global South. So what these banks are, so when we look back at it, mm -hmm. what BRICS is doing is essentially putting forward an alternative development agenda for the world economy. And I think, you know, in years to come, we look back and say that, you know, they did something significant, not only in terms of raising their own weight and right. uh, prestige, mm -hmm. but they actually propose alternatives. Well, I think the BRICS will have to collectively ponder about what they are doing wrong in terms of faltering economic growth. As you know, especially Brazil, it's really slowed down. It's barely 1% now, it's on par with the global South North. Africa. And South Africa. And, South Africa. Mm -hmm. and the other thing, of course, is the high level of income inequalities within these societies. Right. Uh, China, Including Brazil, China. Including China, China. Brazil, South Africa, especially, mm -hmm. are very, very unequal. Mm -hmm. India is not as bad, but as growth and income levels rise, we can expect also, you know, more stratification. Mm -hmm. So when Prime Minister said, you know, this, we also spoke about growth, reviving growth. This is going to be critical. BRICS, you know, cannot be self-congratulatory or complacent. We are making an honest effort at changing the world order, but internally, as uh, Mr. Sai was mentioning, we have the, all of our societies have huge drawbacks, and we cannot hide them or cover them up and just pro pro project an image of artificial strength. Right. So we also need to work together <coughs> in terms of macroeconomic policy coordination. For example, interest rates, things like um, you know, how do we um, uh, build these firewalls against contagion, financial mm -hmm. contagion? All these are critical to these growth issues. And I think we'll need to think about how to revive it. <coughs> the other point is about Africa's growth, because this year's theme was about Africa. Mm -hmm. And I think it will make sense for BRICS to come up with some kind of code of conduct, which is jointly shared, about how they're going to deal with Africa. Because right now, there are all these you know, right-sounding um, slogans that we say, you know, there's room for all of us, we're not going to compete, we will not exploit Africa. But there is also this vision of the BRICS for the people, right. BRICS from below. Mm -hmm. And for that, we need certain uh, codes of conduct about do's and don'ts, about how we will not repeat the errors that the Western world has done. Because mm -hmm. there are many who are saying, especially in the capital market, saying, you know, multinational is a multinational. What's the difference between a Brazilian <coughs> or, um, you know, uh, or a Canadian? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they will both look for, you know, uh, as some Africans say, get, grab, and go. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to overcome that mentality. And if, uh, if so this doesn't do it, yeah. we have failed. Okay. In fact, the so BRICS Summit has also formed a business council, yes, and they will be meeting yes. uh, uh, twice a year and submit a report uh, uh, on, 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 on BRICS. Uh, annual summits, yeah. And on think tanks. On think Very tanks. Interesting yes. because, you know, strategy mm -hmm. cannot be just left to the state elites, right? Uh, there are these independent research institutions. If they can coordinate, come together, and create a kind of a platform for exchanging views about the future mm -hmm. of the BRICS, in the in the world order, I think you know it's up to the researchers and the social scientists to come up with these, and I'm really really enthused. So, with so the in idea. a way, all of us are accepting here the BRICS has indeed given a platform to all these emerging economies to express <coughs> themselves and also uh, to uh, make their stand clear on very key, important, uh, and urgent uh, and let issues. Let there not be an information vacuum because yeah. it cannot be. It's not sustainable. Vacuum will be filled yes. by stuff that you don't want. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kumar, Professor Cholia, Mr. Sahaya, and Mr. Das for joining us in this program. It was a pleasure having all of you here. Thank you so much, and that's all. Uh, we have for you another edition of Public Forum. Thank you very much for watching. Scott.